Today I've got gaming benchmarks on the nearly guaranteed at this point RX 590 along with its first selfie, plus Vega 20 gaming benchmarks. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMelt. The RX 590 is real, or at least it's as close as we can get without an official announcement. What's already been announced though is the GamerMelt Discord server, a community for gaming and hardware enthusiasts. Make sure to check that out in the description below. So the first story that helps validate the RX 590 is a slew of new benchmarks, but this time from Final Fantasy 15, which is a benchmark I'm mostly sure can't be faked. Of course, where there's a will, basically this is some pretty heavy evidence. When it comes to the actual benchmarks, the game was tested through the light, standard, and high presets at 1440p and 4K. Unfortunately, like all Final Fantasy benchmarks, they're given arbitrary numbers based on Square Enix's benchmarking system, so this doesn't give us FPS. With that said, it does tell us how much better the RX 590 is to the 580, at least in Final Fantasy. And unlike the 400 to 500 series, it's an actual difference. For example, the benchmark with the least increase from the 480 to 580 is only 1.97%, while the 480 to 590 is 12.62%, and even the 580 to 590 is 10.44%. If we take the biggest increase, which is the high setting at 4K because the GPU becomes a primary bottleneck, the increase from the 480 to 580 is 6.13%, while the 480 to 590 is a whopping 24%. And even from the 580 to 590, it's 16.85%. Now, obviously 16.85% isn't a giant difference from the current 580, but this basically feels like the upgrade we should have gotten with the original 580, and it more or less confirms it's done on the 12 nanometer process. It also explains why Nvidia is releasing a new 1060, though I will say that if the only difference between the two really is just GDDR5X versus GDDR5, the 1060 is in some serious trouble. And yes, I know that it doesn't really look like it here, but remember that Final Fantasy XV is very heavily optimized for Nvidia. The only real question I have now is price. With a name like 590, it's pretty clear that AMD plans to keep their 580 around, which means either they'll lower the price of the 580 or more likely the 590 will have a higher MSRP. How high that ends up being will determine how good this product is. Either way, something between Vega 56 and the RX 580 makes sense, so it's definitely going to be great to see. Next up, Video Cards also showed off the first picture of an RX 590 by PowerColor. And while I can't guarantee its legitimacy, I absolutely can say that I've never seen Video Cards post an image of an early box or actual product that didn't turn out to be completely accurate. Plus, a PowerCard RX 590 was spotted on the Eurasian Economic Union Certification Office, so this is almost definitely the card. And while it doesn't really look any different to PowerColor's 580, it is still a nice looking GPU. Lastly for today, there is another new graphics card found on Final Fantasy XV's benchmarks. It's the infamous by now 66AF C1 GPU. Uh, okay, I'm kidding on anyone knowing what that is. Here's a hint though. If that wasn't good enough, it's Vega 20. The 66A device ID is already confirmed by Linux drivers, so given this isn't fake, which once again is likely, we're looking at a Vega 20 GPU. Now, before you get too excited, it doesn't tell us much else. Don't forget that Vega 20 has only ever been confirmed for the Radeon Instinct line, and it actually seemed pretty clear that they weren't going to work on an RX 7 nanometer Vega. But here's the thing, Radeon Instinct cards never even have display ports, so either this isn't Instinct or it's an engineering sample that does have them. Of course, why someone would run a gaming benchmark on a Radeon Instinct makes little to no sense anyway. So what were the results? Well, it performed a little under a 1080, though remember that Final Fantasy XV is optimized for Nvidia by quite a bit. See, it's a little deal better than what I'd assume is Vega 64. Unfortunately though, without clocks I can't say too much. Either it's a lower end chip like Vega 56's successor, or it's a lower clocked engineering sample and it could be much more powerful. And that's if this even is an RX Vega GPU. I honestly can't say either way, but here's to hoping. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for the RX 590 or are you ready for Vega 20? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.